and welcome to another Stitches and Scribbles video. Today we are going to be reviewing, making stuff on the Centro knitting machine. I purchased this about a month ago at the time of filming this video and I've made a bunch of stuff on it so far so I thought today I would kind of give you a tour of how it works and how to make a simple reversible hat since I'm making one for a friend anyway. So a little bit about the machine first. Um, when you get it, it comes with the ring piece all assembled. I only had to pop on the legs, which were in a separate package, and the yarn guide, um, which all of that just snapped on really easily. No tools required. You'll see that as you crank these little pegs, I'll show it from the side, kind of pop up as you go and that's what causes the knit stitches to happen. It also has a row counter on it. Um, I have found with my machine, as well as seeing from other people's reviews, that the row counter is not completely accurate. On mine, it seems to skip. It seems to not count like every third or fourth row. So I would recommend that you actually count your rows yourself or use a handheld row counter if you're using this um, instead of relying on this because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have heard that the Addy knitting machine counter is a lot more accurate. On the side of the machine, you can set it to tube or panel. If you set it to panel, you're going to have to go back and forth, and it makes flat pieces. If you set it in tube, it goes continuously around in a circle. So let's start a project. I'm going to be making a reversible hat for a friend. I'm going to be using two shades of I Love This Yarn. This is I Love This Yarn print in the color Brighton Road. And I will also be using the I Love This Yarn regular in the color Sun Gold. So let's start with Brighton. The Centro seems to work best with center pull yarn, um, but make sure that you pull out quite a bit of yarn to start with because your tension should be really, really loose for the most part. You just kind of let the yarn guide, yarn guide um, control the tension as you're working. I'm going to slide this forward so that you can see what I'm doing. So first thing we need to do is crank until we find the white peg. The white peg is the start and end of your rows. If you saw me um, press this over here that resets the row counter even though I just talked about how mine's not accurate and I don't use it, but whatever. You always want to start with the white one because um, that signals the start and end of your row. So you start by hooking your yarn under that peg. Then to cast on, you crank really slowly and go behind and forward alternating between all of your pegs. My handle is suddenly a little bit sticky, I don't know. What's causing that? That's a little concerning. There we go. All right, and here's a tip. You can tell you did it right if you end up going under the white peg. So I can see that I skipped one somewhere. So I'm going to back up until I find it. It was right there. Oops. And then fix it. All right, so now I've made it around once casting on. I'm going to then feed my yarn through that yarn guide that's up here. And I'm going to set it in the middle hole, move my light a little bit, down here. I use the middle hole with this particular yarn, but you can adjust it to the tension and yarn thickness that you want. And then we start the crank. I do the first row really, really slowly because you want to make sure it catches on every peg as you go. And 
you might want to reset after you do your initial row, assuming that your row counter actually works. Okay, and you can see that it clicked and that row counter went up to signify the first row. So if you're making a reversible hat, for an adult size you want 65 rows of your first color. If you're making a child size hat, do 55. So I'm going to keep cranking and show you a couple of progress sections along the way. All right, at this point I have completed 20 rows and you can start to see that knit work um, working up. And I'll show a couple of rows on camera just so you can see kind of what it looks like as it's going. Good forward. So as it's going around, you can hear that click, and that's what I use to count, because um, that's where it should be activating the row counter. So I just hit row 22, but my counter only says 21. So I'm just counting with those clicks. to 27 and I will stop when I hit 65. All right I am on row 64 so what I'm going to do is crank slowly until I hit that white peg again. You really want to watch for it so that you don't miss it by accident. Okay so right now my white peg is up so then I'm going to cut my yarn and I like to leave like a good 10 inches tail just to make sure. So you wanna pull it off, but make sure it's still hooked underneath the teeth of that white peg. Then you want to grab your second color. Again, I'm using the sun gold. Um, oh, I should have found my center pull before going on camera. I feel like this always happens to me that when I'm not filming something, I can find the center pull no problem, but the second I turn the camera on, all of my yarn ends decide to disappear and hide from me forever. Pulled out a gigantic yarn barf. <laughs> Gotta fix that. If you know, you know. The struggle is real with the yarn barf. But at least now I have some good working yarn to pull from for my first couple of rows to keep the tension nice and loose. All right, here we go. So now you take your second color, you loop it underneath that same white peg and feed it through that yarn guide and then the second yarn guide. Pull it so that it's pretty taut. And then you wanna start your next row really slowly again, making sure that it catches on all the teeth. I reset my row counter just in case it decides to work so that I can count to 65 again. I'm just going to keep going kind of slowly for the first couple of rows. That's one, two, three. I'm going to stop for a second and just bind my two ends together with a double knot, being really careful not to pull the yarn off the pegs. And the great thing about these reversible hats is you don't have to weave in the ends because it's just going to go in between the layers. So I just finished row three of color B. I'll see you when I hit the end. All right, I'm on row 64 again, so I'm going to go really slowly till I see that white peg. There it is. So now I'm going to pull out quite a bit of tail closer to 24, 20-ish inches. And I'm gonna grab a yarn needle or darning needle, whatever this is called, the metal thing that you weave in ends with, that's not a crochet hook, that thing. So you're going to pull the yarn off of the yarn feeder. And this is probably the most delicate part of this process. So if you look closely at 
these pegs, they're actually like little pairs where there's an opening in the middle. You're gonna use that opening and the needle to pull the yarn off. So I'm gonna crank really slowly. And then the one next, next to where my tail is is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to go in between and pick up that loop and then move to the next one. And then every so often pull my yarn all the way through, being careful not to pull any yarn I haven't picked up yet off its loops. Slide that through like so. And then I'll give it another crank. And start picking up those other ones. If you're someone who uses a knitting loom, which is basically this thing, but you uh, do it yourself, there's no crank, um, those come with a yarn pick that's kind of um, like a darning needle with a bent end. I could see that that w could be really helpful for this process if you have one of those things. Or a darning needle with a, a bent end. I know that those exist too. I just don't have one. I'm going to continue this until we've gotten all of our stitches. And the final one sometimes gets stuck on that peg, so you just kind of have to work it off and then pull out your work. I'm going to set my centro on the floor. Okay, now comes the part where we're going to actually assemble our hat. So pull out your whole tube. It should look something like this. So the way that we just collected those stitches, it actually works like a drawstring. So you're just going to pull it tight, but gently, because if you break 
your yarn, it's all over, and you have to start over again, and we don't want that. So pull it gently, closed, and then I do a couple of stitches around, kind of in um, making little knots, and then go back and forth a couple of times to really make sure that it's secure, because I don't want the top of this falling open. Oops, slid off camera there, still just sewing it up. Okay, like that, and then just a couple stitches kind of like in an X across the top to really seal up that opening. Okay, now we need to connect to the other side, so I'm going to put it through the center of that hole we just stitched up at the top. Grab the needle from the inside of the tube. This kind of looks like a Muppet situation. And pull it all the way through. This is why that string needed to be extra long because you don't want it to get lost on the inside. Pull it off your needle and the way the cast on works that actually also creates a drawstring. So you're just going to pull that just like we did the other side. making sure that your string from your second color is hanging out in the middle. Okay, so now before we sew this end up, we're actually going to pull the second color string so that the tube folds in on itself and kind of fix it as you're pulling so that it starts um, making that hat shape like that. I do make mine with a brim, so if you don't want the brim, then you would need to make your piece a little bit shorter. Okay, now we can sew up our starting end. So thread your needle with your first color that you knit with and we're going to sew it up the same way we did the other side. So I'm going to stick in through a couple stitches. Oops, there's a knot in there somewhere. I'm going to do my same technique of making the little knots all the way around and then doing a couple of X shaped stitches. Make sure you're just going through the one color, not both, because otherwise you're going to see your stitches on the other side when you flip the hat inside out. Okay, and do a couple of those X stitches across to really seal it up. Okay, now we can pull off the needle and do a double knot with both strands. Real nice and tight so that it kind of sinks in 
to that hole. All right. This part I think is a little easier with a crochet hook, but you could use the darning needle again if you want to. I'm going to stick my hook up through one layer of the hat, get as close to that hole as I can, wrap both strings, pull them down and through like that, tug on it a little bit, and trim it, and then your ends just disappear inside your hat. So that is it. You fold up the bottom to make that brim so that you can see the other color. Grab it and flip it. You can do the same thing on the other side. And that's it for making a reversible hat. So I really like this project. I think it makes a great gift. They look very professional. Um, I'm actually making some of these with a friend and hoping to sell some of them soon. So that should be pretty exciting. But if you're looking for an easy project to get started with and you already have a Centro, um, this is a great, easy, fast project that you can make a lot of in a short time for things like craft fairs or gift exchanges. I feel like every time I film a video there's a garbage truck. I hope you can't hear that in the background, but you probably can. Um, one other project to show you that can be made with the smaller Centro, the 12 needle, 12 needle, 22 needle one, is these twisty headbands. Also a great gift. Overall, I'm really happy with my Centro knitting machine. I do wish that the row counter worked. If this is something that I continue making a lot of, I may eventually invest in one of the Addy machines because they are definitely higher quality. But for now, I'm happy to just use my Centro and count the rows by myself. So if you're looking for something to kind of change up your crafting routine, I highly recommend it. I think it's a great product and a great way to make some products really fast. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below if you're interested in seeing a video with just the 22 needle central machine because I do have that one as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone!